Welcome to That Help Desk Guy. My name is Marcel. Today we will be talking about the upcoming Summit 6.0 release, which holds a lot of new thrilling functions. There's a public test going on right now. If you want to learn how you can participate, stay tuned as we get into it. With Summit 6, you can look forward to a brand new mobile UI and custom webhook payloads, among other improvements. First, let's take a look at the dependency changes and deprecations. Starting with Summit 6, all installations now require Redis. Without Redis, it will no longer function. There's an environment variable that you can use in emergency situations. From now on, X reports in Summit will no longer be the old Office version, but XLSX files. The monitoring endpoints of Summit will no longer return the token provided. This shouldn't break anything, but is still worth to mention. Previously, you would look within opt summit tmp for the folders oversized mail or unprocessable mail if summit couldn't fetch an email. This path has changed. You will now find both folders within opt summit var spool. Don't worry if you update with existing mails in these folders. They'll automatically be migrated by summit. The big plus on this location change is that, especially in run disk environments, these emails no longer get lost upon a reboot. There's also announced deprecation for Summit 7. This affects MySQL and MariaDB users. You're required to migrate to PostgreSQL before Summit 7 in order to update Summit. There's a migration path in the documentation which I'll link below. Summit will also drop Internet Explorer support, which only affects older Windows desktop and terminal server users. For many, webhooks are a very useful feature to communicate with third-party systems. Up to now, the third-party system had to be able to understand Summit's payload, which was troublesome in many scenarios and forced either other solutions or middle scripts translating these payloads. With Summit 6, you can now use custom webhooks. That means you can finally send only the data you need to your third-party system. This function is backward compatible and will send the whole payload like Summit 5 did, unless you activate the custom payload option. You are now presented a new text area allowing you to define your very own JSON payload. This fields editor also provides a JSON validation to help you build your payload. This field allows you to use Summit's variable shortcut like you're used to. Keep in mind that the variable needs to be available and known to Summit in the situation you trigger it. To help you even more, Summit now comes with predefined webhooks for MetaMost, Microsoft Teams, Rocket Chat, and Slack. Of course, the custom payload function is also available for the predefined webhooks and should allow virtually any specific configuration you'd like to have. These predefined webhooks most likely will deprecate the existing Slack integration in the feature. It won't hurt to migrate your existing configuration soon. Now to the hottest change, Zamat's new mobile view. This feature is part of Summit's stack transition and finally ready for the public. Before we jump into that, please note the following limitations. The mobile view intentionally only provides a reduced view. This means you cannot change any agent settings except for your avatar. You basically have your different overviews, ticket creation and listing. Ticket actions are currently limited. You can find the whole feature and limitation list via the documentation link below. For now, this UI holds the most important features an agent might need down the road. Switching to Summit's pre-release is fairly straightforward. If you are on a Docker-based installation, there is no pre-release version. You can switch to develop to overcome this issue. Source code installation users can get the source directly from GitHub. I'll be showing you the transition to the pre-release based on a Debian 11 installation. This is a vanilla package installation based on a Summit recommendation. The taken steps should cover all Debian and Ubuntu based operating systems. In order to switch from stable to pre release, open your Summit repository file with any data you prefer. I'm using the I here, but it really doesn't matter. Navigate to stable and replace it with develop pre release 6.0. Save the changes and fetch the list of available updates. Firstly, we will install the new dependencies of Zamat Redis. You can also rely on your package manager to do this for you. However, in my test it showed that the cable WebSocket was not working until all services were restarted. 
Make sure to follow the update documentation. Stop Zamat and clean the Zamat cache. Before updating Zamat, ensure that there's no PostgreSQL server updates. If there are any, update them separately. In my case, there are no further updates besides Zamat, so I'll just run the normal upgrade procedure. After the update has installed successfully, open the virtual host configuration for Zamat for your web server. Now we will need to add a new proxy location to that file. In my case, I need the directive for Nginx. You can find both Apache 2 and Nginx variants in the control folder of Zamat, both on your server or on GitHub. Paste the directive below the WebSocket directive. To have a better overview later, you can optionally add the legacy WebSocket server command to the configuration file as well. Now restart your web server. Opening your Summit URL should present your instance as usual. If you want to test the mobile view in your desktop browser, you can just append mobile to your URL. I will show you the mobile view with a developer tool phone simulation because some UI elements behave much better in smartphone mode. The login screen of your mobile view allows you to switch to the desktop view if you need it. From here you can also switch back at any time. After logging in you will see your home area. This area consists of a new ticket option on the right, a search bar, a link to the ticket overviews and a list of your favorite overviews. By default you will see all ticket overviews. You can adjust this list. Simply remove or rearrange the overviews as you please. You can also re-add removed overviews at any time. This is your very personal setting and has no global effect on others. With these quick access options, you can jump into any overview you need at the moment. You can also always switch the overviews in a ticket list. The ticket list has no size limit, and that means that you can always load more tickets by scrolling. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can also use the search function from the home area. After typing your search phrase, someone will allow you to search for tickets, users and organizations. Summit will also remember your last searches to assist you. In the search details, you can always switch in between the information types you're looking for. The new ticket dialog guides you through the creation of new tickets. The dialog for customers looks exactly the same, except for the ticket type selection and attributes your customer is not supposed to see. If you leave mandatory fields empty, the dialog will highlight these fields and the steps they are missing in. The biggest change and currently only available in the mobile view is an editor that helps you to format text without keyboard shortcuts. You can easily add inline images, remove formatting, and even use mentions, knowledge base article answers, and text modules. One important thing to note for the mobile UI is that it does not store any draft from ticket creations and ticket articles right now. Reloading the page shows you will lose your progress. However, you can use multiple tabs for the mobile view. 
The ticket view displays ticket articles the way you're used to already. If you have tickets with a lot of articles, Summit will only display the first article and the most recent ones. You can always load all remaining articles if needed. You can use the See More button on articles to expand them to their full length. Furthermore, you can also change the visibility of articles, display their metadata, forward them by mail, or reply to them. Adding new replies, no matter if it's a note or an email, is very easy. If you want to take a look in articles of the ticket during the creation of your reply, use the Done button to hide the reply dialog. Desktop users can see the mobile view users working on a ticket as part of the collision indication. If you want to change ticket attributes like state, owner or group, simply minimize the reply dialog by using Done and click on the ticket title. This function is also available when you're not writing a reply. Using Save does update the ticket. In the same dialog, you can also view subscribers of the ticket, subscribe yourself to it, and access and change customer and organization information. Furthermore, you can use the context menu next to the ticket number to change the ticket customer. and merge the ticket into any other ticket. Use the bell on the bottom to display your notifications. From here you can quickly jump into your tickets or simply mark your notifications as red. This also will mark your desktop views notifications. Last but not least, you can adjust your avatar, UI language and log out. From here you can also switch to the desktop version or install the Mobile View as app. Installing the Mobile View as an app will work on both desktop computers and mobile phones. It provides a shortcut to your browser with a very minimized UI, just like an app. However, note that this option may not be available if the width of your screen is too big. If you have followed all the steps from the upgrade, you may still see a red banner saying the connection to the server was lost on the mobile view. This can have two reasons. The first reason would be that you perhaps forgot to restart your web server. That causes the cable endpoint not being proxied correctly. The second and more likely reason for this is that your summit configuration does not fit your environment. Make sure that both your HTTP type and FQDN of summit fit your web server's configuration and what you are using in your browser. After you fix these settings, restart your Zamat and try again. That should do the trick. Note that an invalid configuration will also cause the new ticket dialog to not load at all. So that's new in Zamat 6. Don't forget to leave feedback in the community on how you liked Zamat 6 and what could be improved. I hope this video gave you a good overview of what to come and expect. Until next time.